Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I do welcome the opportunity to speak in this short-term Let's Debate and to bring the significant concerns to the Chamber from across the tourism industry and the rural economy. If only this was an isolated SNP green policy having such a devastating impact on our tourism industry and rural economy. Rural policies and tourism policies de developed far too often by urban MSPs with no understanding nor interest in the practical application and outcomes of their policies. Yeah. It is obvious from watching Patrick Harvey's performance in local government committee yesterday that he has just a fundamental dislike for private landlords yeah. Yeah. and he cares not a jot about the fallout to the industry for the people and the businesses across Scotland as long as he gets to punish the private rental sector. Yeah. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, this STL legislation comes on top of the Scottish Government's temporary rent control policy and cap on rent rises. And I say temporarily, advisedly, as it was brought in during COVID restrictions, but once in place, Patrick Harvey has led the Greens and the SNP to keep it in place. The problem is, Deputy Presiding Officer, as we know, the Greens and increasingly the SNP do not engage with reality, let alone businesses resulting in legislation that has caused huge rent rises chronic shortages of rental properties, especially for university students, yep. a rise in homelessness and children in temporary accommodation, and a delay in building affordable homes for rent, exactly the opposite of what it was intended to do. So whether it's a seaside bed and breakfast owner in North Berwick, or a farmer renting out holiday cottages in Ayrshire, they'll now have to consider if the added complication and costs associated with this scheme are worth the effort. Now, the ability to grant temporary exemptions for major events is at least a recognition that these events should be supported. But from the discussions I've had with those behind major sporting events, the current approach is bringing little comfort. Take the Open Championship as a prime example. This major golf tournament regularly brings tens of millions of pounds to the local economy. Next year, it's due to be in Troon, bringing tens and thousands of visitors to the area. Short-term lets are crucial to there being enough affordable accommodation in the area. Now, while South, if I could just finish the, finish the point, I'll, I'll, I'll take Ben's, uh, Ben's uh, sorry, my member's intervention. Now, while South Ayrshire Council have stated they will grant temporary licences for the period of the event, the added cost and regulatory burden on homeowners for something they might only do once every decade may well make it not worth the effort. That means fewer properties available for those wanting to stay and higher prices for remaining accommodation. For events like the Open, this scheme risks making Scotland, the home of golf, a less attractive prospect to host its greatest championship. And for events like the Edinburgh Festival and the Fringe, so uniquely tied to the city, it threatens their continued existence. I'll give away ben McPherson. Mr McPherson. Uh, thank the member. I agree with the member that making the temporary exemptions practical and, and workable is, is a really important consideration. Does he agree with me, though, that we should all be concerned about the very high levels and charges that some who own properties um, go to market with at these events, whether it's COP, major sporting events? Isn't it a collective uh, challenge for all of us to, to think about? The other option is we don't have any accommodation at all. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 that, and that's the problem with this legislation. Legislation is going to do. We're going to have much less, uh, much less properties available, so the actual cost of the accommodation will go up. Yeah. Deputy Presiding Officer, there's simply no way that the Scottish Government can stand there and say that this scheme is the best and the right one, and it's ready to go. As Paul McLennan said in his opening statement there, he wrote to the MSPs and in one paragraph asking and encouraging us to host, uh, encourage hosts to sign up to the scheme and the next paragraph telling us he was planning further changes. Yeah. If a meal is ready, Deputy Presiding Officer, you generally don't need to change the recipe after it's served. Yeah. The Scottish Government's approach to policy is increasingly driven by the so-called sunk cost fallacy, being unwilling to abandon a course of action because they have, um, they have heavily invested in it Absolutely. long after it has become <laughs> clear that changing the members course in his last 40 be seconds, beneficial. Like what the Scottish Government should be doing is working with the sector to develop workable regulation, but the scheme the Scottish Government is attempting to drive through risks driving countless numbers of small operators out of business, damage the tourism sector and penalise the many for the actions of the few. Deputy Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government needs to change course, pause this scheme and work with providers to create a system that properly recognises the diversity and range of short-term lets across Scotland. 
If they choose not to, then they will have no one but themselves to blame for sinking Scotland's tourism sector. Thank you.